everyone. Welcome to Hidden Gems. We are back for another episode and we're so excited to be here because all my single ladies, all my single ladies, I have a big treat for you today. We have Liv on the podcast and she is helping people one day at a time be unsingle. <laughs> the show is about being unstuck. But she's also helping people be unsingle. She started a company and um, it's fantastic. I also want you guys to know that it was not easy for her to get to where she is today. Things happened for a reason and here we are and we're going to talk all about her journey. So Liv, welcome to Hidden Gems. Natasha! How are you? Oh, you know I'm obsessed with you. Oh, same. No, literally. We met through a mutual friend and we just loved each other. Great energy, great vibes. But I like for my guests to mm -hmm. introduce themselves to the Hidden Gems community. I want to hear how you talk about you. So there's your camera. Tell everyone. Thank you. Hello. I'm honored. Who you are. Hi. Tell us all of it. Hello. I'm Liv Schreiber and I'm obsessed with Nyla. And aside <laughs> from that, I own a few different companies, Camp Social, which is a camp for ton hundreds of women in their 21 plus years who want to make new friends, um, regardless of age or background or where they're from. We have women from all around the world coming in August for a three-day camp. So I'm so excited, looking forward to that. And I run Hot and Social, a community for adults to make friends in New York. 99% arrive solo, 100% leave as friends. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, rock a, a series online called Hot and Single, where I showcase hot and single people that I think you should meet. And people slide into the DMs. <laughs> and I have one of the couples currently vacationing in Europe. I think he's about to propose soon. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I get to be like a rabbi or a something at someone's wedding i'm so excited oh my god that is so good we mm -hmm. love when it works we love we when it works. love when it works and we love when it doesn't well uh, listen you always learn something right yeah you're always learning something so that's that's great but it's just nice that you can build a community of people and i think that being in new york city going out obviously you can go to a bar you can go anywhere and you can meet someone right but you don't know you see someone you're like i don't know if they're single i don't know if they're into me i don't know if they're nice and that's not just a, in a romantic way you could see someone who's a complete vibe at a party and you're like i think she's so cool i want to talk to her but you don't know if she's a bitch mm -hmm. you don't know if she's going to be mean or vice versa if you're a guy i feel like a lot of guys it's like hard for guys to make friends as adults too yes you know so when you create this community of people and you're like yo uh, this person's here because they want to meet people. Mm -hmm. I'm here because I want to meet people. And so it, it kind of takes down that layer of like, no, no, it's cool to come talk to me or it's cool to come talk to this person, which is great. So is that what you're, is that the reason why you started this whole thing? I started it because I was lonely. <laughs> I yes. could talk to a tree and yep. so can you. And yep. I moved to New York. I graduated early from college and I had no friends here. And I didn't know how to meet people. The modern meetup, you know, companies were not doing it for me. And yep. uh, I've, I've been an entrepreneur since I was five years old selling bracelets door to door in my neighborhood. But this was different because it was the first time I never actually set out to have a business. Yep. I just wanted to throw a party. I barely drank where everyone came solo and left as friends. Yep. Because I wanted to meet people with intention. Yes. And I wanted them to have the same intention. So one thing led to another, and now there are three companies stemming from that motto. That's amazing. But it was not intentional. No, it wasn't intentional. And that's in to the gyms community. We hear this happening, and when you do something from your heart or you do something from your soul, there's always something beautiful that comes of it. Yes. And sometimes, sure, it's a great company, but sometimes it's just like this feeds me so much and I'm happy and it brings happiness, right? And I'm sure for you it's both. But I want to go back to five years old, entrepreneurial <laughs> spirit. So they say an entrepreneurial spirit. You had that spirit at five. Oh, yeah. So where did that come from? Tell me about your upbringing. <laughs> like, what, like, was it dad like, baby, we got to make this money now? Like, what, like, what, what was it? <laughs> My dad grew up in, you know, a uh, lower middle class family in New Jersey. And his brothers went to Penn and Wharton and mm -hmm. Duke and... My father, have you met my dad? I have not met your dad, no. Oh my God, he's like, you know, unhirable. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> and so this guy gets to college and his parents are like, uh-uh, we are not 
helping you. You're mm-hmm. a party boy and you're like a stoner. Mm-hmm. And uh, he very quickly had to figure out how to make it. Um, and also, you know, boys, competitive, wanted to do just as well as his brothers. So he started selling leather bags out of the back of his um, car wow. around New York City, around Greenwich Village in the West Village. Wow. And started a company from that and eventually um, hired one of the brothers to come who actually both of them to come and, and one of them still works with him. Uh, and it it taught me and my brother that you can be the underdog. You don't have to go to that college. You don't have to know that textbook stuff. Mm-hmm. If you have that grit, mm-hmm. that's all you need. Mm-hmm. So I had that in me because I have watched him hustle and my mom as well since I was little. Yeah, yeah, wow. That's, yeah, shout out to Annie Duckworth. Making something out of nothing, like you, like I know I have to survive, so (laughs) what am I gonna do? Where is there a need, where is there is this? I'm a hustler, so I can do it. So that was in your blood. The hustle mentality was in your blood. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly, okay, good. And my grandma, she's 83, she's still a top broker in Connecticut. Wow. Doesn't wanna slow down. My mom, she's a designer, Mm -hmm. loves Mm -hmm. it. So we are a family that's just obsessed with, Working. Working and figuring it out. And figuring it out. And we love a challenge. And Mm -hmm. it it also surpasses into different aspects of your life. Because when you can make it after being told no a thousand times at work, Mm -hmm. that reflects in your personal life. When you're going on dates and you get Mm -hmm. rejected, you're like, all right, it's a numbers game. Yeah. Next. (laughs) Next. Next. Yeah, exactly. You're lost. Or you could be sad and be like, oh, I'm never going on another date again. Or next. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Let's keep going. 100%. And so, but that's great that you got to, you know, we are products of our environment and some people have to kind of get out of an environment in order to see their potential. But the good thing about you is you got to see these hardworking people and be like, oh, duh, that's what I have to do too. Because girl, sometimes I look at your Instagram and I'm like, where does she find the energy? (laughs) She's influencing with the outfits. She's putting together hundreds of people on a hot and social freaking, t- and she's, she's at this event, she's doing this, she's doing that. I mean, you, I'm like, where does the girl get the energy? Where does she get the energy? I love life and yeah. I love people. Now that's true, that's true. I recently read a, a two books, number one, one on human design. You can look up human yes. design, I know yes. you, and I know you know human yep. design. Yep. And another is called um, Surrounded by Idiots. Oh, I haven't read that one. (laughs) It's new. I started reading it last weekend. I have to give it to you because it it groups people Mm -hmm. into four different, there are four different types of people, Mm -hmm. red, green, yellow, and blue. Mm. And if you want to not feel like you're quote unquote surrounded by idiots, like you, you know, there are some people who are like, I don't know what their deal is. Yeah. Like what they're talking about. What are they talking about? We just don't, we don't connect. We don't vibe. And there's just, we don't vibe. This book talks about how you actually can vibe with everyone if you typecast people into four different personality sectors. Mm. And so I'm really motivated to understand the people around me, even if I may not agree with them, have anything in common with them. Mm -hmm. I know that there's something, something there that I like to hustle and, and find. So I have a lot of fun meeting humans every day. But what about, and you are a very positive person and you're such a light for sure, but what about, do you ever feel like, yeah, I don't want to to connect with this person. Yeah. Like, I don't want to vibe with this person. Oh, like, yeah. Like, that person. You feel oh, like that too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it, like, I yeah. mean, as positive as I am, like, <laughs> if I find out something or if there's a red flag or, you know, there's just, you've mistreated a friend of mine. I'm very loyal and very protective mm-hmm. of my friends and and people around me, my family, like yeah. if I find something out, I will not waste my breath on you. Yes. But you are out. Yep. And you will know you are out. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I'm very inclusive with everyone else. It's good to know. It's not everybody lets you know. Some people you'd like, oh, I didn't know that. But yeah. no, it's good. I'm I'm a let you know person too. You know where you stand with me. For this yeah. <laughs> and you know what I think that's so it's so nice. It's such a relief. Yeah. Because I don't have time for games. I'm working on building things and mm-hmm. um, and I don't tolerate it, but I also don't want to waste my energy. Right. With it as well. Yeah. No, I hear that. Um. So, okay. So when did you come to New York? When I was 21. Okay. What made you take the leap to come to the Big Apple? 
No, that's a good question because I was at, I was a junior at the University of Wisconsin, Madison. Mm -hmm. I had gone to study abroad in Sydney, Australia. Wow. So I was living there. Mm -hmm. And the second I saw guys walking barefoot with their abs out across the street, I thought, how could I ever end back up in Madison, Wisconsin, <laughs> in the snow, in the basement, with everyone drinking? I loved it. Yeah. But I couldn't go back. I was ready to hustle and make money. And so mm -hmm. I called it my FIO year, my bonus year, my figure it out year. Yeah. And uh, graduated early and, and moved to New York, got my real estate license and decided because I saw Steve Gold on the reality pot. That show, what was the show called? Um, I know what you're talking about. Like, Million Dollar Listing. Ugh, hot. Saw yeah. him and thought, I love people. I could like real estate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be a broker. But what were you studying at in school? I didn't pay any attention. I was in the School of Journalism, but- Oh, School of Journalism, okay. The, the textbooks didn't keep up with the times. Oh. Of course. So I was scrolling. I thought um, I was going to work in fashion because my parents are in fashion. Yeah. And I yep. got certificates at FIT and Parsons. And yep. I was known as the fashion girl. Mm -hmm. Had some internships at Jill Sander and mm -hmm. Prada and Teen Vogue. But they didn't feed me. Mm. You didn't feel fi fi filled up. I liked picking my outfit for the day. <laughs> Period. <laughs> <laughs> and we still love that, right? <laughs> but you know what? How you were talking about, you know, Finding the Gem in the Rough, mm -hmm. I started listening to Gary Vaynerchuk um, mm. while in 2018, 2019, when I hated my job in real estate, yep. I would cry every morning before going to work. Mm. I didn't like my job at Prada in the shoe closet where I didn't see the light of day from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. No complaints. But I loved learning with those headphones in my ears at those jobs that I could not love right and that that was like such a beautiful lesson mm -hmm. yeah yeah and did you did you think though when you were working let's just say at Prada or, or for the real estate did you have a goal in mind like I'm I'm working in real estate now mm -hmm. and I want to be the million dollar listing dude you know or girly or were you like I'm working in the shoe department now but I want to one day design these shoes or did you or were you just kind of like lost and like I don't know what I want to do yet but I should probably work in fashion because of my parents or you know did, yes. you, did you have an idea or you didn't have one I was lost okay I was a lost puppy okay and not only that I was lonely mm -hmm. I was jealous mm -hmm. of people on the street who had plans and were sitting with each other mm -hmm. that's how sad I was I was mm -hmm. so lonely yeah yeah and that was the saddest part I had no plans. You didn't have plans and you didn't feel fulfilled because you didn't yeah. know exactly what you wanted to do yet. Okay, so what do we do? How do we figure it out? What do we do next? You get fired. Because <laughs> we are unmotivated. I'm motivated AF. But no, no, I mean at the job. You were, unmo job. You were unmotivated at the job, so you got fired. Well, my boss, mm -hmm. uh, who's still the vice president at Corcoran, you do the math. <laughs> She had the doorman uh, at Corcoran taking bets on how long I would last because her assistance wouldn't last longer than a month. I mean. So every day I walked in that door, mm -hmm. they were telling me, today's your day. You're going to get fired. I won't go into what happened in that office. Yeah. But I will at some point. Yeah. Just don't want to yeah. bring that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's just say it wasn't a fit. Um, yeah, I mean, but also someone just, you work, imagine working for someone and they're just like basically pr praying for your downfall yeah. or waiting for you to fuck up. And it's like, I'm human, people fuck up, but like teach me, you know yeah. what I mean? But that wasn't obviously the idea behind it. That's awful. But I'm so grateful because it led to to this. And mm -hmm. I remember I was hysterically crying the next day on the West Side Highway. <laughs> And I'm wait, how long did you last? Longer than a month. Ah, hey! Take that, old boss. Take, take that. that. <laughs> I was the longest lasting. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's all I'll say. But uh, <laughs> the next day, I get a DM from a broker. Mm. I had no clue what I wanted to do with my life. And okay. he goes, Hey, Liv, you still taking broker clients for Instagram help? 
Hmm. Go. Yeah, I have one slot left. Scarcity. Great. Next day, I started right. my social media agency. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Okay, so you get this random DM. And so it's basically like, okay, this is the path, path I should go down. So let's go down it. I didn't even know. I just had to pay my rent. Right. Period. Period. Okay. So now we're doing this. And what do we think? It's a crazy story. Brace no, yourself. No. It's we might be here a long time. No, no, no. <laughs> it's great. No, it's really great because it's like I love seeing the roadmap of how someone becomes happy and who they are. Mm -hmm. And to me, I always say that's – that is success to me. It's not mm -hmm. how much money you have in the bank. No. Do you love who you are today? And I meet you, the moment I met you, it's like this woman is a good person and she's happy. You can tell that you're happy. Do you know what I mean? Thanks. And that is success, right? But how do we get there? Because we didn't, we didn't just, you know, we're born and we're happy <laughs> and then we learn life and then we get, yeah. <laughs> and then we are like, oh, I'm a woman, I'm, I've arrived and I'm actually happy in my skin, right? right? So I love that roadmap to getting there. Okay, so mm -hmm. now we're doing it. We're on, <laughs> we're on social media. <laughs> we have a social media company. We're working with this guy. What's happening? And speaking of, by the way, you and I both know that money and followers mm -hmm. does not equate to happiness. No. And that is like no. a really big thing because you think, oh, once I hit this amount of followers, once I hit this amount in my bank, let's be very clear. Mm -hmm. It all has to do with you and none of that stuff is going to affect you. If anything, it's actually going to make your life harder. Yeah. So, yeah, you exactly. Know. If you don't have the right, if you don't have the right mindset around it. Yeah. How many, Correct. I mean, we live in New York City. How many rich people do we know that's fucking miserable? Yeah, exactly. So I, I, just a reminder. Yep. Um, so I, when I was in real estate and hating my life every day, I started posting uplifting quotes on Instagram, called myself an accidental influencer because I just wanted to post things that would get me through the day. And if this is going to help me, then it's probably going to help someone else. Correct. That is a gem. That's a gem for the person who wants to write the book, for the person who wants to do the movie, who, the person mm -hmm. who wants to do whatever. If it will lift you, it will probably, if you want to do the podcast, <laughs> you know what I mean? It will help someone else. You're that, such a special person. No, but it's but it's true, and so are you. It literally, it's so true. So that's great. All right. So yeah. So uplift. So eventually, I you know get followers, and by followers, I mean probably around ten thousand followers because I had been reposted on Barstool, like not even in a bikini because I don't have boobs or a butt. <laughs> In a tank top, in a tank top in the ocean, okay? And like I had gotten some traction from that. Great, yeah. amazing. Imagine what that bikini would have did, Liv. Yeah, it wouldn't have done <laughs> no, anything, let me I'm tell kidding. you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. They'd be like, who's this 10-year-old boy? No. no. Um, anyway, so I'm like, okay, this is cool. So I start after work, when before I got fired, I was teaching models. My friend's aunt had a modeling agency mm -hmm. and I pitched to teach models how to become personalities on social media because I started to notice a trend in 2019, which is doesn't matter how hot you are, if you don't have a personality to monetize, you ain't got nothing. Mm. So that broker noticed that I was rebranding the content of all the brokers in my office in my free time to make their listings and their personalities more exciting. Wow, great. So it's like we could Great view idea. brokers as influencers and then they'll stand out because there are dentists, there are doctors, there are surgeons, there are so many quote unquote boring people that mm -hmm. need a revamp. Yes. I became obsessed. COVID hit and I started teaching myself. Mm -hmm. My brother and I say, my twin brother, he's single. Uh, <laughs> we're 27 and JB. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we started calling ourselves uh, – the graduates of Google University. Because mm. we literally, I talk about YouTube University all the time. Yeah. Because like, it's a thing. You just figure it out. Yep. You figure it out. Okay. Okay. So start this agency and I never felt like I had arrived at my final destination. Still. Mm. Mm. I was making money. Right. But I didn't feel when I said, hey, I'm Liv Schreiber and I own a marketing agency, which I still do and I love and I love my team still didn't feel like that was it that was the end there's something else mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so how much time because I feel like when you're building something or when you get the idea in your head we're so now like all of our time is focused on building this thing mm -hmm. right and so 
as you were building, did you still feel like, oh, there's something else? Or was it until it got kind of like got its legs? That's when you were like, okay, now what else? I'm so ADD. So I always think about what else. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So while we're building, we're thinking about something else. And that's, again, a, it attributes to you having multiple businesses and you having multiple things because you're like, you know, it's right. always going. Right. And that's okay. To be a multi-hyphenate is okay. It's amazing it is mm -hmm. it's very good and but i think again it's process right some yeah. people can only focus on the one thing there's a book called the one thing and they talk about that they focus on the one thing and then they build that and then they move around mm -hmm. but some pe but people who can do both you should do both especially yeah. when you're someone like you said you're 80 use it to your advantage yeah don't be mad about it don't be sad about it don't right. let people think and say that it's a bad thing uh oh, we're gonna use it to our advantage right and oh you're so cool Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> I love you. And speaking of, you know, don't be mad at yourself when you work better at midnight than at 6 a.m. Amen. Literally play to your strengths. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, once you make the cash, hire for your weaknesses, hire people who are better and more knowledgeable than you yes. in email marketing, for yes. example, yes. or in accounting or yes. in law. So focus on you and what you are good at and play into that. Yes, I agree with you. And like you said, when you're in this entrepreneurial business, like, yeah, there's all the books, like wake up at 5 a.m. Like the people who wake up at 5 a.m. are so successful for certain people. And I think that we really, like you said, if you're a night person and you now don't have to answer to someone and you are building your own business or whatever, if yeah, if 12 a.m. works better for you, then let's let's ride it let's to the real. I'll have this thing where I'll get like super exhausted at 10. But if I go to sleep before, I don't know why, if I go to sleep before like 1130, maybe mm -hmm. even 12, I will always wake up. I will mm -hmm. always wake up. So sometimes I'll like exhaust myself. It's 10 o'clock. I'll fall asleep on the couch or wherever. I'll wake up. It's like 2 a.m. And I'm like just do, 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 do. <laughs> I'm like I went through this thing where I tried to go back to sleep. I would try hard to go back to sleep. And I would just roll around in bed for three hours. And now I'm like, I could have been doing something in those three hours. I can do some laundry. I could do that. I could do that. You know what I mean? So now right. when I wake up at 2.30, I'm like, okay, what can I do? Maybe I should like set up my emails for the next day or this or wow. that or blah, blah, blah. Because I'm like, I I'm, know I'm going to be up for at least three hours. So then I'll be up go back to sleep at at six, wake up again at eight, you know, or something like that. You yeah. Know what I mean? I'm like, I have to make this work for me. And 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 instead of being mad, like, mm -hmm. I can't, I woke up. Oh my God. Bah, bah, bah. It's like, you have to make this time work for you, you know? Right. We have the same 24 hours as Beyonce, as they always say. Oh, that's... <laughs> And yep. that's true. And yeah. they, I always, to your point, say, treat yourself like you're a kindergartner. Mm -hmm. Like every day, if you're lost or even if you're not lost, this should just be a process as we grow mm -hmm. after school or in school, whatever you are. There's no excuse. Every day you should be learning. You should be learning about yourself. You should be learning about the things you like. You should be trying new things. You should be taking different walks, different streets to work. You should be checking in on old people or old friends and checking out new podcasts and checking out new songs and new genres. Like we get to play with what we are given. Everyone's a piece of clay. You get to kind of go with the shape that you think you're going to go and turn into and you can mold and, and add on and add new designs and paint your clay however you want to paint it and shift and morph and change. Well, what you just described is a lust for life. And I feel like obviously you have that um, in, being, in just being an inquisitive person and being someone who, like you said, loves to learn. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for someone who's struggling and they're like, I don't have, I don't feel that way. I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't like anyone. Mm -hmm. People suck. Do you have any advice for yes. someone who feels that way? You're acting like you're dead. You're, <laughs> you're alive. Yeah, there you go. And like what a blessing that is. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have an autoimmune disease and it, uh, I was diagnosed two years ago and it really gave me such a new perspective on life because we take for granted mm -hmm. that we're able to move without pain or breathe or wake up and be able to go to the grocery store and afford things that a lot of people are not fortunate to do. Mm -hmm. And so first of all, wake the F up, mm. realize how lucky you are. Yeah. And I'm a very positive person. So yes. saying wake the F up is not like me, but yeah. you know, 
I want people to wake up before they get a wake up call. Oh, oh my God. Take one step towards trying something new. Yep. That like, we're all about to get me fucking emotional in here. Aww. That's like, that's, that is, um, that is a beautiful message. It really is because you, people think that because you're young, you have time. And like you said, you have an autoimmune disease and things happen that will stop us in our tracks, yeah. right? Um, and before you know it, you don't have the energy that you used to have or you don't have, you know, or you're feeling a different type of way. And, or you your know, parents aren't around. Exactly. Or any anything, any of it, right? And, um, you know, yes, it is, it is – woe is me is super easy when we're just like mm, sad and mad or depressed or whatever but you owe it to yourself to try to dig yourself out of that place because there is a lot of life to live there's a lot and we're here for a reason yep and you know how people always say like oh that was a sign meant for me i just saw a sign I, you know the the universe speaks to us in music and in numbers and in repetition and with people and with coincidences mm -hmm. but what a lot of people who are feeling down about themselves don't understand is that we are also signs for other people. Oh, yes. We are also here to impact someone's day. Mm -hmm. Your smile may have mm -hmm. saved someone and you will never know it, yep. but you were that messenger. Right. So if it's too hard to live for you and in, you're in such a dark place, live for other people. Right. And know that like you are here because you're supposed to be doing something to help others. To help people. Yep. And I said that on actually, I think the last podcast, uh, which when this comes out, it would not be the last podcast, but I said that on a podcast, you know, if you're feeling um, stuck, try to find something to do for someone else. Mm -hmm. Try to find purpose in helping someone else. And it's it's literally exhilarating. In charity, mm -hmm. in, in volunteer work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Literally Google mm -hmm. where to volunteer in New York City. Yep. A million places will pop up. Yep. You will feel so good. Or what if you just start small? What mm -hmm. about someone in your building who needs something? Yep. What about slipping a nice note under someone's door or Randomly. offering to get someone, your doorman or an old lady, something from the grocery store? Mm -hmm. Like you don't need a, a volunteer opportunity. Right. You can do that every day. You can do it every day. Even a smile. Yeah. You know, sometimes when uh, you know that someone needs it, right? And by the way, mm -hmm. if that mentality doesn't work, another mentality, because I've been through all the mentalities here, is like, why not? Like, think about their loss. If you smile at someone and they don't smile back, their loss. Yeah. You go on a date with someone, they don't like you back, their, their loss. loss. Someone Fs you over and you get fired and you don't do business with them and a deal goes bad, their loss. loss. We yeah. keep going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You're right. You're so right. You're so right. Okay. Oh, kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always have all these like little sayings that stick kumbaya. with me. <laughs> right now it's kumbaya. I have been kumbaya in my, li my life up. Okay. Let me tell you. Mm, kumbaya. Uh, so now, darling, we're in New York. That was a tangent. We're, no, no, that was, it was the best, the best kind, truly. <laughs> I feel, I, I feel so good about that. Um, so we got it to back to New York. We're in New York. We're working, we have our marketing company. What? What was the moment that made us switch into hot and single? Mm -hmm. Was hot and single first? Yes. Hot and single was first. Okay. What yes. where where did that come from? Or was there a, a was there a point before that? There was a point before that. Okay, what's before <laughs> that? Tell me. Mm -hmm. So I had still been stuck on my fashion dream. Mm -hmm. And I started sliding into people's DMs <laughs> like a hundred a day. I became a maniac. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I had an Excel sheet. And I wrote down 100 people. I was like in my early 20s. I was like, I have nothing to lose. Literally. Yeah. They just see me as a young hustler. Like, great. And you could do that at any time. DMs are like, wow, how lucky are we? We could DM anyone on the planet. And if they see it, it's a game of numbers. We have an are in with Kim K or an entrepreneur or a business we love. That's sick. Yep. Sick. Just about consistency. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to play a little game. And uh, 
I started to DM this entrepreneur who I really looked up to, who I'll reveal. Then I started to DM her husband because I realized she wouldn't see the messages, but her husband had a lower following, so he would see. And I would literally just say, he was also an entrepreneur, I would just say, like, have a great day <laughs> every day <laughs> for 300 days straight. Did he think you were hitting on him? No. Okay. okay well, good. probably, but I was too naive. I didn't know. <laughs> Hope you're amazing. You're going to crush it today. And that's very much his attitude as well. Okay, okay, good. One day, <laughs> I'm in the bathroom, and actually I was headed for an interview with Google because I wasn't sure like what my marketing agency would turn into. I was still young. I, I still didn't know. And uh, I got a DM from him, finally. On my way to an interview with Google, with my resume in my hand, <gasps> on the toilet. Stop. Yes. About to sprint out of my apartment to the interview. Uh-huh. He answers my DM. He goes, hey, you in New York? I go, yeah. He goes, you know the best places to shop in New York? I go, uh, I call my mom. Mom, where do guys shop in New York? She's like, I don't live, I don't know. Google it. Google University. Google it. I send him a list. And then I'm like, Liv, this is your chance. This is your chance. Hello. I literally saw two paths. I could go to this Google interview or I could offer to shop for this guy and be a stylist. Quote, unquote, stylist. Every girl has style. You watch videos on Instagram, you're a stylist, great. I go, why don't I shop for you? He goes, great. Little bubbles, he's typing. I'm like about to leave for my Google interview. He goes, why don't you meet me in 20 minutes? I go, okay. Un unreal, unreal. My Wait, life changed. Where did he leave? Where did he live? He lived in Georgia, but he was in New York. Okay, 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 okay. That's what, okay. Yeah, Good. I became a stylist. Driver picked me up, huge black suburban. I said, what size are you? He goes, sometimes I'm an extra large, sometimes I'm an XXL. I go, great. I go, what's your price price point? He goes, I don't have a budget. I go, okay. I go, how much do you want? He goes, I don't know, just show me what you like. Hands me his credit card. Yep. Bye. Oh, when do you want your credit card back? Uh, whenever you want, just let me know. What? So we go shopping. So we go shopping. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. We do a good job, and eventually I'm introduced to his wife. Our goal. I became her stylist. Wow. And she asked me if I liked her invention. Mm. Okay. Because you said she was an entrepreneur. Yep. And it was Sarah Blakely from Spanx. Wow. Wow. And so I said, actually, I think I could help you make it cooler. Yeah. The chutzpah, like the balls for someone to say that to a, someone who's like crushing it. Yeah. Who's a billionaire. What was I thinking? But I said it in a nice way. Like, I think I can really help. Wow. And she said, great, meet with my VP next week. And so I went on to launch uh, the Sphinx Activewear collection. And then I realized, okay, marketing is my thing. You love it. Love it. Yep. And you were like, I love it. I did it. I'm doing it. Okay, amazing. Wow. That's such a crazy story. Crazy. That's a crazy story. Could have been at Google. And her and her husband are like goals. They're amazing. And they're great people. And the reason- You can tell too. They're fantastic. Yeah. But the reason I like started Hot and Social is because working with them, they started posting me. So more and more people started following me. Right. And then it got to a point where I was running Brand Caffeine, my marketing agency, loving it, different clients like Spanx. And then someone asked me, I was 25, where do I make friends? You seem to have so many friends, Liv. Mm -hmm. I go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know how I met our mutual friend, Bruna? No, I don't know how you met Bruna. I don't know how you guys met. I was so desperate to make new friends. I went up to her on at a party at an American Express party. I don't even know how I got invited to that. <laughs> and she was wearing a red top, uh, a yellow top and red pants. <laughs> and I had bought a yellow sweater that day from like a thrift store. And I went up to her and I said, you're a literal model. I go, I just bought a yellow top. And tomorrow I'm going to send you a picture on Instagram. I'm going to pair it with red pants just like you. Oh my God, obsessed. And she's like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, can I get your Instagram? She's like, yeah. yeah. Next yeah. day, take a picture, send it to her. She's like, all right, this girl's kind of weird, but I love her. Let's get coffee. Yep. So 
I made friends literally by just going up to people on the street. Yep. So then I was like, you know what? For this girl and the girl above her in my DMs, mm -hmm. oh my God, I wish they could meet, but I, I didn't know how to like connect that many people. So I was like, I'm going to throw a party, come solo, leave his friends. That way we all have the same intentions. Mm -hmm. Hot and Single was born, and then we rebranded it to Hot and Social mm -hmm. so that it had nothing to do with relationship status. Right. So it's just like, if you do meet a guy, great. If you meet a girl, great. If you're a guy, girl, he, she, they, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, you make just, a friend. You're meeting someone. You just want to, no pressure. Yeah. Like, let's make friends first. If mm -hmm. something comes of it, great. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be like fringy and do like a dating thing only. Right. That's so much pressure as a girl and mm -hmm. as a guy. Mm -hmm. Who's going to mm -hmm. do that? Mm -hmm. But I mean, but have you seen, you've seen success though with both. I mean, yes. I know with Hot and Social you have, but with Hot and Single, you've seen success as well. Yeah. So we expanded Hot and Social into parties monthly and different activations where yep. we have cold plunging and saunas launching soon, um, where everyone comes solo, leaves his friends. And we have um, you know different leagues around the city where people come solo and leave his friends. And from there, I started the series Hot and Single on Instagram yes. to showcase the really cool single people so that if you like the guy I'm showing, you can slide into his DMs. And that's, and normally it's guys because you have more of a female following, right? Yeah, I don't show my boobs. I don't have any on the yeah. internet. So it's all guys that I show because all my followers are girls. Right, exactly, which makes so much sense. But I have been featuring more girls on, we actually just acquired the Hot and Single Instagram page and we're building it up and... I'm excited to show more girls. Girls and guys, yeah. yeah. But no, but that totally makes sense. And um, for our listeners, if you go to Liv's Instagram, and the hot and social Instagram, <laughs> and you see a guy that you like, there's lots of comments <laughs> that people are saying. Some of them are hilarious. <laughs> and it's like, shoot your shot in the guy's DMs, not in this comment section, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I get such a kick. Oh, my God. No, no, no. But, like, the comments are so good. They're so, so good. good. I, the moment she posts, I don't care what the guy looks like. I don't give a shit what he looks like. I'm here for the comments. I'm here <laughs> for the comments. And somehow it reaches girls from around the world. So they're like, I volunteer as tribute. Twist my arm. I'll go on a date with you. Like, yeah. Or they'll, they'll start sending me paragraphs about like, I'm a divorcee. I have three kids. I'm this, I'm that. Here's a picture of me. I love to water ski. And I'm like, you go, girl. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Like slide in those DMs. Yeah. yeah. We have a um, we have a mutual friend that I remember. You One day we were all together and was it three of the guys that you put yes. on your story? Yes. And you were getting messages or they were getting. Didn't one of them, didn't Harry go on a date with yes. one of the girls that. Mm -hmm. Slid into his DMs and Jake. Oh, and Jake too. Yeah, they both. <laughs> oh yeah, it's so. Good. I'm like a wing woman. No, truly, no. The like, oh my gosh, that's it. You know how people are like bestie, bestie, bestie. <laughs> like I'm your bestie. No, you are the social wing woman. You are our wing woman. No, truly, you are. You are the wing woman. Like it's amazing. I'm honored. No, truly, you are a wing woman. I like that though. Yeah. No, you literally are a wing. <laughs> like you are the like. You know how people do that on social media? They're like, hey, guys, it's your bestie here. It's like, yeah. hey, guys, here's your number one wing woman here. I like this. No, literally, that's you. No, literally, that's you. Because we talked about marketing. No, literally, everyone needs it. Everyone needs it. Yeah, I had my marketing time, too, you know? Yeah. You know what? I'll be your wing woman. Whether yeah. you want a friend, something to do, something to wear, a guy to talk to, a girl mm. to talk to. Yeah. I got you. Exactly. Exactly. No, I love this for you. Um, <laughs> But it's true. So... Go comment, go and look at her page. If you see a guy that you like, go find his DMs because he's single. <laughs> um, but yeah, so have you had any like crazy stories though? So I still didn't feel fulfilled after hot and social mm -hmm. because there were guys <laughs> and I didn't have this feeling of belonging in my sorority at college. Mm. Um, and same for my high school group of friends. Really? Mm -hmm. you just, I know that you sounds just like a red flag. Well, you felt different or you, they made you feel different or was it something that you had to get over? Um, I think it was probably both. Mm. 
I, I don't think I'm a perfect person for sure. No. Um, my sorority at Wisconsin was mainly girls from Minnesota who all knew each other from high school. Okay. So they all knew each other. <laughs> and I was like this Jewish girl from New Jersey coming in and I don't think they You're the realized. outsider. Yeah, so I was the outsider. And I graduated early. So I left with great college friends. Like I have four best friends from college. But I wasn't in a group. Mm. And same with high school. I never really fit into a friend group. Mm -hmm. I was always friends with like, and still am to this day, like the older kids. And I always picked people out like gems. I never did well in like a clique. Yeah. Well, did you? Well, it ain't for everybody, I will say. You are such an individual. I don't know anyone like you, right? I don't know anyone like you. But, but, yeah. but like I celebrate that for me and I right. celebrate that for you. And I think that sometimes people will try to box you in and be like, well, why do you smile so much? Yeah. Wait, why are you so happy? Wait, actually... It's raining out. So, this today sucks, and you're like, actually, I dance in the rain. <laughs> I thrive in the rain. What you mean? You know. So yeah. there's like a there's this conformity, mm -hmm. and I think that's the reason why I was never in a sorority because I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna do something because someone told me to. I'm I'm just not. We are not good at following directions yeah. or the rules. No, truly, truly. You tell me what to do. I'm logging out. I'm, I'm like, not wait. Listening. I'm like, why are we doing that? Like, what are we do? You know. So. I was, I knew so being in a sorority was not going to be cool for me, but I've always yeah. been a very social person. Whereas my, one of my best friends who I grew up with, she was, it was not easy for her to make friends. So she did go and get into a sorority and she has amazing sorority sisters that she's still really good friends with. And it worked for her, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but for someone like me, I was like, yeah, no. But we're too polarizing. It yeah, just exactly. Work. It's like same mm. for my best friend. She has like a million BFF sorority sisters who are basically like my inherited ones. Yeah. But like you throw me in that, and I, I am not. It's not gonna work. Which is fine. Yeah. Right. And it's fine. But but so to your point though, you were saying that you weren't able to like ha you didn't feel like you fit you fit Correct. in, and that was like you said, it's. a it's two things. It's like they weren't fucking with you, but you also weren't fucking with that. Correct. Right. So I feel that. Okay. Okay. I feel that. So and go it's ahead. it's like you want to go talk to that girl who's a year older, like who's a year older than you who's super cool or a year younger than you or the teacher or the janitor. And like they're like, that's weird. And I'm like, I I just that's love. That's not weird. I, I kind of felt like a talent scout. Yeah. Like I'm picking you. I'm picking you. I'm picking you. And I love you for your own individual reasons i didn't want to like be in the group and only stick to the group i think that's such a, a shame well it's also a, a selfish thing in the sense or an unselfish thing it's like because i if you can and you know it's playing with fire sometimes but when you see the good in a lot of people or when you try to pick out the good in certain people then it's like it's different than other people i feel like they're just focused on what you can do for me or mm -hmm. how i see you versus seeing that person and it's a gift to see people for their strengths right you know what i mean it seems like you're really good at that uh, back at you mm -hmm. um so i i grew up going to sleepaway camp mm -hmm. and i loved there was the girl side and the boy side and for anyone listening sleepaway camp is a seven week camp where you don't go home you sleep over and you're in a bunk with girls for the entire summer wow seven weeks seven weeks and it was life-changing for me. Mm -hmm. I got to be friends with tons of different girls from all different parts of the country. But at this point, world. how old are you? I was nine when I went to camp. Okay, got it. Until I was about 18. Okay. And I loved it. And so here I am, this influencer and, and uh, marketing expert and had my marketing agency and had Hot and Social where I was producing events, but I still felt like, you know what? During the summer, I always looked forward to camp. And what if we had a camp for women so that I could get to go back to being carefree, phone down, meeting girls from all around the world, no matter your background, no mm -hmm. matter where you're from. Uh, so I decided, why not just start it? Okay, so you start this camp, amazing. And how do we start it? Do we just do it on socials? Do we just say, hey, guys, we're going to start this thing? Do you reach out to brands? How do we monetize it? Like, what did we do? I literally had under a 1,000 followers on the camp social account. People were like, what the heck is that? 
and I just post it on my stories a lot. Um, and so promoting it. Who wants? Who would want to go to camp? <laughs> I don't know what what it's going to consist of, but I trust myself and in, in setting up events, and I know it's not going to be fire festival. But right. trust me, if you if you follow me, if you know me, if you want to come to Hot and Social, if you've been to Hot and Social, and you want to try something new, come do it with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had an eight, 180 girls come from around the country last summer, and now we've tripled in size. So uh, Camp Social is for women from around the world. And we're about to hit 100,000 followers on Instagram this That's week. A, it's amazing. So is it slots that you you put like slots? It's like, okay, so the, for this year, we have this many slots, and then like people just have to like get it or what? So it's, it's the same as any hot and social event. It's a democracy. Mm-hmm. First come, first serve. First come, serve. Okay. Tickets sell out. Get your ticket. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Okay, great. So you get a group of people to come and everyone does, like, do you send them an itinerary? Do you, is it a surprise? Is it just like trust live? Like how <laughs> does it go? So it's way bigger than me. And okay. that's what I love so much. Hot and social people come up to me and they're like, how do you find out about this? Uh, it's not the live show. Right. Okay. And I don't want it to be because mm -hmm. it's not about me. Mm -hmm. I just want to be the conduit for people to connect. Mm -hmm. And if I'm able to help people do that, it's not about me. It's about you coming to Camp Social. Mm -hmm. So we send them packing lists. Oh, um, great. They have all the testimonials. We share right. like, you know, past campers and camper of the week. And right. um, there's proof and evidence of, of camp and the love that girls have and returners and we share exciting developments on our Instagrams of what's to come and they vote on different things. Mm -hmm. So they really are in charge of, you know, they tell Their us experience. they want sunrise yoga and not sunrise climbing walls and we'll do sunrise yoga. Yes. They tell us they want a gluten-free, dairy-free vegan station. We make it happen. Mm -hmm. Like everything that we do is because the customer asks. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so special is that we have that instant feedback, which is so cool. Yeah. It's it's really a beautiful thing. And that's like using social media to your advantage, you know, and yeah. and, and a good thing to do there. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh so this is your third This is our second sec summer. Second summer doing it. Okay, amazing. Great. Yeah. And like I'm sure every time every every year you'll, you know, learn more, meet more and yes. ugh, it's just great. And I I mean, I don't have a life. I <laughs> I'm obsessed with this because the girls from camp, they meet each other. One girl's from Arkansas and Chicago and Boston. And they were, for example, they were campers last summer and one's from New York and they became best friends. They literally never, one of them's divorced. They ne never would have met. Never would have met. And now they're vacationing together in Alabama, like yep. right now. And it is, that's my purpose. Yeah. Um, I want this to be a TV show. <laughs> I'm like, this is like, it's like The Bachelor. It's like people who you've never met who you would never meet and then you like become friends with them. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, cause they talk about the friendships with Bachelor and Bachelorette so much, how people like become friends and like, and you know, maybe you would have walked across each other at some point, but not really because it's like, you live there, I live here, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. And so like you go through this amazing experience together where you get to have this uninterrupted time together. And so you really get to connect and that it's like, it's amazing. But this would be a cool TV show, actually. <laughs> it would. But like also like, you know, TV, they want the drama. Yeah, they we want don't the want, drama. We don't want drama We don't camp. want drama. No, <laughs> no drama at Camp Social. Yeah. What there is at camp is diversity of activity and experience, which is really cool mm -hmm. because we have grouped girls by age in bunks. But you and I both know that your age doesn't dictate your maturity. No. Or anything about you. No. You could be 33 divorced with three kids. You could be 33 single. You could be 33 married. You could be 33 engaged. Yeah. So. Doesn't matter. We group everyone by age in bunks when they go to sleep. But outside of this seven hours or eight hours where you're sleeping, everything is activity based. Right. So you're meeting girls of all ages, of all different backgrounds, just because you guys like the same thing. Right. Yeah. And that's how friendships are made. Yeah, for sure. A mutual, um, mutual interest. Yeah, exactly. So, so speaking of age, that's great with camp that you don't, you know, there's no age discrimination or anything like that. That's great. But when it comes to dating trends, because you have seen a lot of this, 
have you seen a difference or I don't know if it's difference or complaints or maybe compliments or whatever from or a trend from people dating in their 20s Mm -hmm. versus people dating in their 30s yes what what is it let's talk about it. I've actually noticed a a pretty scary trend happening right now Mm -hmm. people don't see what's right in front of them and it's really scary Natasha we've had so many events where girls and guys come solo to our girl guy dinner and I've had a few people come up to me and go, hey, Liv, can you introduce me to one of your friends? And I go, what do you mean one of my friends? I go, look around. There are 50 single amazing humans right here. Wait, you mean one of your friends that's not Correct. at the pl- Oh, I thought you, okay, wow. Like people will be like, oh, who are you going to set me up with? Like people don't see what's in front of them. And that's what I'm really scared of. Like that everyone thinks because of social media that there's always something better. Mm, something else out there. And this is a rare occurrence, but I've noticed it start to happen more and more where like we'll be in a room for our hot and social and people are like, can I, can you set me up online or can you post me on hot and single or, or they're like removed from the present. From the process where we are and what we're doing right here, right now. Right. Oh. And I'm like, wait, but just look to your left. There's someone like so hot right there. Or look to your right. Do you think that, and do you see that happening amongst 20s, 30s, 40s? Like everyone? Yeah, everyone. Everyone. And do you think that's because of the social media experience? Uh Uh-huh. And so that's, I didn't mean to bring it negative. No, no, no. That's something that I want people to be aware of is like, you got to play with the moment you're in. Like you're put in a room for a reason. Don't have your mind on the future, future, future all the time. Yep. Try to be where your feet are and it's a practice and it's hard. And we've talked a lot about meditation mm-hmm. just in our friendship, but mm-hmm. try to see what is special in the room with you. Right. Because if you're living forward, 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 you're not going to notice what's sparkling in front. Right. Right. Yeah. Be present. Be present. Yeah. We. That's like an ethos. That's our mantra. Be present. Mantra. But that's really interesting. And so for myself and maybe our listeners, you can take this take this pledge with me. <laughs> I really try. I do have dating apps and stuff too. But I really try not to swipe or scroll unless I'm at home. Because mm-hmm. like I'm at home, I'm bored, whatever. And a lot of times it's like I'm on my way to sleep and I'm like, mm, let's see the boys, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, or whatever. But I have been out. Now, with the exception of, like, being with my married friends, and they're like, girl, let me see them. (laughs) Like, you know, because they just want to see, because they're just like, what's out there? Like, they just want to, you know. So we play this game. I'll give them my phone. They'll swipe left, swipe right, whatever, for me or whatever, because they just, you know, it's so fun. It's curious. But beyond that, um, beyond that, I really try hard not to do the apps or even think about the apps or whatever when I'm out. Because if I'm at a party, Mm -hmm. I am, like – I, well, at this point, it's like a sport. I'm like, who is the most interesting man in this room? <laughs> and how do I talk to him? I am looking for him all the time. I'm like, where is he? Oh, there he is. Okay. How do we get him to come over? <laughs> um, I actually did that. It's so funny. I did that. Um, I was out at this party my friend begged me to go to. And then I was so not wanting to go. And, you know, it's like the gym. You're like, I really don't want to go to the gym. And then you go to the gym and you're like, oh, thank God I went to the gym. Yes. Right? So I did that. Sometimes, you know, we got to take one for the team. I took one for the team for my friend. He begged me to go to this party with him because he thought he was going to see an ex-girlfriend of his, but she wasn't there, whatever. (laughs) But I'm like, fine. It takes me like, you know, 30 minutes to get ready, which is very fast for me because I normally get ready in like two hours. But (laughs) I'm like, I don't really care. I don't even want to be here. Fine. (laughs) I go and I see an interesting man. See? Yep. It was crazy. And then we ended up talking and we hung out and what you know like and he's nice you know so i will say that if i were stuck in i don't want to be here well your ex isn't here whatever like let's go Mm -hmm. like and not being present and being where i am to your point Mm -hmm. i might not have met this very interesting man right (laughs) and if what what about if you were on your phone Mm -hmm. and that Mm -hmm. is something a trend that i'm proud of at hot and social is people are off their phones yeah 
And it's so nice because yep. studies even show when your phone is out, it actually signals the other person. It's literally body language. Even if it's placed on a table mm -hmm. when you're out with friends, yep. you are like, I don't know what the percentage is, maybe 40% less likely to have a deep connection just because a phone is out, even if it's face down. Wow. Wow. I believe that. So it's really cool that mm -hmm. like you were present and you just showed up and you're like, what the heck? Yep. Let's do it. Let's see. Let's go. Yeah. So that's great. So that's great. Okay. So that is the trend that we've noticed. Um, you also said, you mentioned that there are people dating. <laughs> we've had some success stories yes. as well. Yes. And do they like follow up with you and tell you this? Do you like, how does that go about? I try not to pry. Right. Especially with guys because um, everyone gets, you know, a little sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, so I let them come to me. And if it's been, you know, six months, I'll, I'll check in. But sometimes I have, it depends on their personality, right? Like I have a few guys who messaged me. I met them in the Hamptons and they're like, I'm going on a date tonight. Or people from Girl Guy Dinner, they're like, oh my God, I'm still talking to a girl from last dinner. I've had couples show up after having met at the party three months prior at another event just wow. to show me that they're together. That's great. Um, Kyle and I have bumped into, Kyle, my boyfriend, mm -hmm. and I have bumped into couples out when we're going out to dinner who stop me and they go, Liv, we met at this party, so-and-so. So, -and -so. so mm -hmm. that is like my favorite thing. Same with the girls from Camp Social, the female friendships that are formed. Like they'll send me pictures and tag Camp Social when they're visiting each other, flying into different states and different countries because they're maintaining their friendships. Yes. And that is just, it's the most rewarding thing. Yeah, and we, so listeners, go follow Liv. <laughs> You're looking for some connection. It's great. And that's why I wanted to have you on the podcast because you really cultivate connection and community. But it's not about me. And yeah. we all have the opportunity every day to bond with quote unquote strangers and yep. to smile at someone. And it's literally an experiment that you can test out wherever you go. Yep. And if you want to spice up your life, make yourself feel a little bit better, try giving someone a smile and mm -hmm. seeing how that feels because it really is so addicting. Yep. Yep. So I always ask my guests because I always want to know what's in the wellness toolbox. Oh boy. What do we do? I to stay add well? more things to that toolbox. Um I have just started uh strength training. So I'm excited hot and social is oh, starting yes. strength training. Nice. Um so that's every Wednesday. You're welcome to join me. Mm -hmm. Um at Hot and Social. And Natasha may show up, <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe yes. We'll give it a shot. Anyway, she's being messy as fuck right now. That's I all I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> we're having a different conversation in our brain. Yeah, we're having sure. a different conversation in our brain. Yes, um, Rio show Rio strength training. Yes, we are. But, but I am gonna be twenty eight in September, and yes, you know, in your late thirties. Um, or 40s or 50s, our estrogen starts to go down. And so I've realized I'm weak. I do hot yoga yep. and I have my autoimmune, but I realize I have no butt. Uh, I, I have, my abs are not strong anymore. I got to get back into building muscle yes. because now in our lives is a really important time mm -hmm. to build that muscle before it's harder to do so. Right. So I'm actually really excited to have more protein. Yes. And uh, I'm cutting out dairy, which is difficult. Difficult. I love ice cream. Oh. But dairy and gluten are inflammatory. Um, so yeah. I also feel really alert. I just cut out coffee, actually. Ooh, we still trying to get on that train. I cut it out for a week. That's good. I was a matcha girly for a week. That's good. And then we we relapsed. But, we relapsed. By the way, like it's really cool to do those experiments. And so what? And you we can start again. And we can start again. You can start again. You can start again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Okay. So yeah, we're strength training. That's amazing. That's great. We gonna see that. We gonna see that butt. <laughs> yeah. Because right now I just have legs. <laughs> Nothing that's else. That's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah. But that's. I mean, the best way to build it is to strength and, and lift. Yeah. It's great. Okay. Good. So and we meditate. We we fall off 
But we try. Yeah. We try. But that's the whole point. The point is no one is perfect. And anyone yes. you think who is perfect or has their shit together, trust they me, don't. They don't. And we they know. Don't. We know. We are in this influencer world. We are all a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. And be like a horse. Put your blinders on. And when you go to start harping on the fact that this person is this or has accomplished this or is married or has kids or this – Put your blinders on like horses in their race have blinders on and focus on you and improve you your want. own, what yeah. you want. Yeah. Um, I have also cut out listening to sad music. <gasps> that? And I can't watch violent shows. Okay. I get that. I get that. Or sad shows. Or sad shows? I can't do it. So, okay. <laughs> because they make you sad. It, it really affects me. Yeah. You're super empathic. Yeah. 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 Well. Um, <laughs> She's like, what a loser. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. I, um, I am someone. Are you a sad music junkie? I am. I have went through my emo stage uh, and I still go through my emo stage. I will say that for me, I totally get that. And I do think that music is spiritual, right? Yes. So like you can hear a sad song and now your whole day is sad, yeah. right? 100%. And I'm super empathic too. But. There are times when I hear a sad song and I hear the – obviously this person wrote this so they probably went through it, right? Mm -hmm. And it makes me feel less alone if ah. I am sad. Oh, now, that's a beautiful way to think of it. I'm not sad <laughs> and then I hear that sad song, then I might be like, oh, my God, why? And now I'm thinking about all the sad things and now I am sad. But sometimes – you know when you need a good cry? Yeah. Sometimes I need a good cry and I'll put some Adele on and I'll be like, girl – or I'll put some Fanagram on or like something like – Ed Sheeran real, does yeah, it. Yeah, Ed Sheeran. You know, I'll put something sad on and I'll be like, you were me and we – we went through this. You got through it. I got through. We're going to get through it. You know, like I feel that like even I say Adele because, you know, she has 19, she has 21, she has 30 and she's like married. She literally said the other day, like, I'm going to take a break from music for a second because the bitch is happy. You can tell yeah. she's happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's got her man. She's you know what I mean? Like she's happy. And some of her music is sad, obviously not all of it, but she went from chasing pavements to <laughs> I don't know when I'm doing music again. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> I can hear Chasing Pavements and be so sad for the four minutes of that song and then be like, but this is what life looks like 30 plus. Do you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> at 19, we were Chasing Pavements. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I love, I have never <laughs> thought of it like that. So that's my this mindset. It's a great mentality <laughs> to have. So, listen, so if you love sad music like I do and you just need to feel it for that moment, there is the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, sometimes. I <laughs> love that because I never thought of it as like having the artist as my friend, as someone who, oh, who's yeah. gone through it. Oh, oh, girl. Oh, girl. Me me and Adele are best days. <laughs> We're best days. Me You're and, her wing woman. No, truly. Me and Amy Winehouse besties besties okay like i feel these women so hard i do i feel them so you know i get it though mm -hmm. because i will have to turn sometimes i'll hear a sad song and i'll like you know adele out and then i gotta put some cardi b on i gotta put some Nicki minaj on i'm like uh, uh, uh. we're not getting in that we're not getting in that mode we about to say we about to uh, we about to pop out we about to get some money we're about to no you know what i mean so i feel that i i get it i totally get it you'll do you're wild. Yeah. <laughs> You're wild. Why, how this brain works, I don't know. It just, it works. <laughs> yeah. It just works. I would love to study it one day. <laughs> Truly. I don't know why, it, it, but I'm like, but so that's how I flip things around. I flip things around. I flip that sad thing around, but I also very much get and understand. And that's why certain kids, you know, they aren't allowed to play violent video games and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I even, I actually was talking to a friend who has a child who is four mm -hmm. And three, he's three, and he's with his cousins who's like seven and eight, and they're just like, oh, I'm going to slash your face, like playing, but like right. they play video games, and like he's like, slash your face, what's slash? He doesn't even know what that is because he Aww. doesn't play video games, right? right. So like, doesn't even, that, that language doesn't even occur to him because he doesn't partake in that, right? Correct. So I get it. I get why we don't listen to sad music, <laughs> and I get why we're not watching um, violent movies. And I get why you do. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, so it's, it's you know, but to each his own. And that's the beauty. And that's why we are on this podcast, because you have to find your way and what fills you up, you individually, you, me individually, me. And it's okay. And there's so many perspectives and ways to look at things. So 
um, wow, I love us. I love us too. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> me too. Me too. No, and I mean, what you said earlier, oh, girl, you <sighs> took me to a place there. Um, but so we, Camp Social was your last thing that you started. Mm-hmm. How do we feel as far as our cup? Does our cup is our cup filling up? Very full. It's Very filling full. full. See, that's beautiful. But they say you always have three balls in the air, right? And you're juggling them. Yeah. And you got to decide what's glass and what's plastic. Mm. What is okay to let bounce? Yep. And I've let my personal life bounce mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. And so I'm excited to recalibrate and do more with my friends and and my family and in my relationship because I've focused a lot on building. And um, so just so everyone knows, yeah, it's great. Everything's great. And I feel so blessed. But at the same time, we are always working on how we can recalibrate and juggle those balls. Yep. We love balls. We we love balls. (laughs) We sure do. (laughs) Um, so my very last question for you, do you think you can have it all? Do you think women specifically can have it all? What's all? Whatever all is to you. Oh, wow. Family, money, business. I don't know. That's usually what they say. You can have family, you can have money, you can have business. You know, you can basically do it all. Whatever that is to you. You know what having it all means to me? What does it mean? Having that inner hum Mm. that vibration of content Mm. of of relaxed of peace of joy of gratitude and they say gratitude actually vibrates higher than love Mm -hmm. and so having it all to me means waking up every day and feeling really grateful and always leading with that yes because without that Nothing else falls into place. So you start with gratitude and everything else will. So you can have it all. Wow. You can have it all. You guys hear that? You hear that? You hear that? I hope you guys feel happy, inspired, good, amazing. Liv, thank you so much for coming and sharing your story. And it's so inspiring beyond. I know it's weird because it's like you and you're like, what? But so inspiring and so amazing and cultivating community in the way that you said, I just wanted friends and that's how it started. And now you have this business, multiple businesses, and it's just, it's, it's so inspiring for so many people, for me, myself too. So I thank thank you. you. But Natasha, thank you (laughs) because you're putting this out into the world. You didn't have to, you're busy. You got a lot going on Yeah, and you've chosen to inspire and help other people, which Mm -hmm. is so cool. And Uh, For those of you who don't know, I ran into Natasha last night at Chelsea Living Room and sat down. She's such a welcoming person, like Mm -hmm. on screen, but even more so off screen too, Mm -hmm. where she's like, come sit down, Liv. You literally talked to my cousin (laughs) who's going to college. I was like, Natasha, do you have any advice? And I thought she'd give like a one sentence answer to my cousin last night. (laughs) You literally, I talked to her off camera and off mic about how kind it was. You literally had to sit at your table. You did not have to do that. You had like seven friends around you and you took the time, you stared my cousin down. You just made her feel so good. And her parents are going through a divorce right now. You didn't even know that. So like the fact that you went out of your way to take the time Mm -hmm. to do something in your free time that you don't have a lot of. I want people to know how special that is. Oh, thank you. And that was so kind. You talked to her for like 20 minutes. (laughs) about all the advice you have for her. So for all college girls listening, mm. you have a speaker on your hands <laughs> and you should invite Natasha to speak at every sorority <laughs> meeting or F the sororities. At, no, just kidding. Just at kidding. Just every, kidding. <laughs> every group, every... Yep. Invite Natasha to come speak to your college and to your classes because you have a lot to teach people. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. Thank you. Well, look, and like in the meantime, listen to my podcast. Subscribe. Subscribe. And like, comment. Look, subscribe. <laughs> like, comment, DM. No. <laughs> Do all the things. Do all the things. Thank you so much. No, it was great. And I hope she, like, you know, is, is going to be okay with everything, with her transitions that she has going on right now. What do you mean? Life. You're her new... Very godmother. She's fine. <laughs> okay, good. She's good. great. Good, good, good. Okay, good. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening. We will see you guys next week. Um, lots more. 
to come and to catch up on message me dm me all the things uh when you guys want to see more have other people on let us know what you think of the episode all of the above see you next week Thanks for listening to Hidden Gems with me, your host, Natasha Parker. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. It really helps grow our budding community. Follow me on IG at Natasha Parker and the show at Gems with Natasha. Hidden Gems with Natasha Parker is produced by Gotham Production Studios.